All right, we got a good show today. I got my guest, Garrett Rusi. He's a uh, he started my program, the Alarm System Reset. I would say around was it March? Yeah, it was mid March. Okay. Um. So what we're doing is we're doing a a check in, right? Four and a half months. Um. Some of his shifts have been pretty quick, and uh, even with with digestion. They were pretty quick with me. It took me a, a year and a half before I could even start to train on foods. So seeing him move through this quick is is quite amazing. So what we'll do is we'll do a check in at four and a half months, and then we'll do another check in at the year mark to see what, you know how far he's come in a year from from when he started the program. So what I'll get you to do is I'll let me know what symptoms you were dealing with starting this journey. And the shifts that you've made up to, like since then. Yeah, so I was I always had day to day I had anxiety. And it was it was kind of weird. I got so used to it that I didn't know what not having anxiety felt like. It yeah. it just became like the norm. And then um I, I had some personal things happen in my life, uh, just with like my mom and health scares, and that kind of like tipped my bucket to overflowing. Um, that's when like I really noticed everything and it kind of snowballed as my symptoms kind of fed off of each other and, and like the looping thoughts and all that stuff. So it it went from anxiety to uh, memory loss at work, mostly wow. like jobs I've been doing like for over a year, I should know yeah. off by heart. And I was like looking for levels and looking for uh, like all, all kinds of different things I had to I had to look up exactly how to do my job again is mm -hmm. weird and then once that started happening the stress is just like out, out the roof yeah. um so it started snowballing so i started to get slower speech uh my spelling and my math actually declined like i yeah. i could barely add two numbers together it was just like my brain was in a huge like fog uh, so I started getting dizziness, uh, just recalling information that people had given to me uh, and procedures that new procedures, uh, outlines and stuff like that, at, mostly at work, uh, muscle spasms, tension headaches, uh, digestive issues I always had. Uh, They're just getting a little bit more pronounced, uh, they, uh, bleeding ulcers from different trigger foods I wasn't able to eat uh wheat or soy um my you, did you have to be did you have to be uh extra careful if it was a trace amount of wheat did you have to look at uh ingredients oh, yeah. or anything oh, oh yeah it was it was hypersensitive hypersensitive so it started off just with like wheat and then it moved on i it was actually the sugars so even candies that that had that glucose from wheat in it would would set wow. me off yeah. So it was like completely rejecting wheat and all of its byproducts, anything else that was made from it. Um, so and then it moved on. I I I started noticing all this stuff and I started going to like a, a natural path. So she suggested I get blood work done. That's when I realized that I had really, really low hormones. <laughs> wow. Yeah, just opening up another can of worms right there. Yeah, so and then I have a lab background, so that does that didn't help me any. I just like started researching a bunch of stuff. So through that, I did blood tests. It was really really low. Uh, they got me on uh, different drugs and supplements, and nothing was really working. It actually was decreasing every time that I went to get retested. Um, so the, and then I had the ability, inability to focus and keep my train of thought. Yep. Um, writing emails. I remember when I was at work, I was trying to write an email and I totally forgot how to spell was like W A S like, that's how bad it was. And I just like, like yeah. once, once I realized that I it felt like the floor just like disappeared and I was falling. Like I was like skydiving without a parachute. And then I, the, the fear started to, to over, overwhelm me. What, some, um, what were some of the thoughts that were going through your head at that time when you noticed things 
with your mental like decline, right? You start to catastrophize, right? Yeah, like, well, and then I had a PTSD from that because I had a, a, a major concussion and that all my symptoms were what I was going through at that time when I was like in the acute stage of my concussion. So all the yeah. memory loss, like the, the cognitive decline and all that stuff. So that was like one of my greatest fears. And, and as the stress got worse, my symptoms grew. <laughs> so, Did your symptoms also uh, fuel your fears? Were you traumatized by your symptoms? Oh, yeah. They came oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. I thought I was, I was getting like early onset uh, Alzheimer's or dementia or something. Yeah, so did I. I it was crazy. But yeah. like the symptoms are so real. And like yeah. you, you can't, I don't know, your brain just really powerful <laughs> when it gets going oh yeah man <laughs> uh i also noticed sensitivity to light and noises like now yeah. loud noises um and even my hearing my hearing was starting to, to go to a little bit like everything felt like i had uh like earplugs in i, I couldn't right. really hear people talking to me I'd, i i started reading lips and stuff just to figure out what right. they were saying um insomnia the insomnia happened around the same time as like once i noticed that the stress and anxiety was high uh so i had that for six months the insomnia when that started happening did you start to worry that you weren't getting enough sleep that you're gonna go crazy uh i wasn't worrying about that i just knew that that was making my next day even more difficult for memory and and all that stuff and to actually perform at work Mm -hmm. um yeah so so then that cycle started uh at night and i kept on waking up and worrying about what i was forgetting at work so then i wouldn't sleep and then it's like you know sh rinse and repeat over and yeah. over again uh and then uh i started doing all kinds of different supplements i went to, I, I did uh iv infusions to boost like uh all different kinds kinds of vitamins and minerals up in my body to make it run more efficient. Just nothing really was really. Uh... Did you go on any uh, coping mechanism diets like maybe carnivore or avoidance of all? Well, you had to go avoidance of all wheat, but any any type of diets that you tried? Uh, I, f I forget. I think I did. I did do like a liver cleanse, and it was yeah. avoidance of meat just to like get your liver to to kind of release some toxins and stuff i did notice a difference after that yeah but it was it was more like uh the physical fatigue and stuff was a little bit better so doing these supplements did you ever notice that things got worse uh the supplement the supplements i not really worse more like the hormones and stuff yeah i i noticed it did drop off through the tests and stuff like i I mentally accepted what was happening to me at that point too. Yeah. So I I wasn't like too worried anymore. I just was living with it. And then um yeah, I know I noticed that like none of none of the supplements really did too much. Yeah. All right. So you, you're dealing with uh, anything else? That's a lot. Um uh yeah, that was pretty much it. And then, uh, yeah, I started your, the program in uh, mid March. So, so how long? It, it originally in your life have you been dealing with this? Like food sensitivities? How long? The wheat? Oh, it was like over ten years. For right, wheat. so for ten years, you avoid it because you'd have you know, oh, flare. crazy reactions. Yeah, it was all all digestive, uh, like uh, bleeding ulcers in the stomach, like. I, I wasn't able to eat any spicy foods because I was I had like open wounds in my stomach. Yeah. Gas. Oh, pain. gas, diarrhea, all like you, all that. <laughs> yeah, all the fun stuff. <laughs> my yeah. my body just wanted to get it out, flush it as fast as possible. Acid reflux, <laughs> all that stuff. Oh, right. Yep, acid reflux. That's a common one. Yeah, and then. uh your hormone uh, imbalances. When did that start? How how long ago? How long did you uh, have that like, for? 
Well, it, it was probably for over a year, but it, it started getting worse as the stress, uh, my stress okay. increased at work. And, and my, my job itself was stressful too. Okay. Um, yeah, that makes sense. So it kind of played off each other. So I, end, I ended yeah. up stepping down from that job to like go fully into this program. So that's probably, awesome. Probably is what was the turning factor for me to to do so well so fast. That's the thing. When sometimes with recovery, before you can even start recovering, I tell this to some people, you have to make the hard hard decisions in life. And then sometimes you're, you know, you got to pay some bills, even with relationships. Some people are uh, stuck with certain toxic relationships or with a narcissist or with a job that's toxic. And I'm like, you got to make some hard decisions because at the end of the day, it is your life. You want to recover. You want to live, you know, as long as you can, healthy and happy. So this forces you to make massive changes in your life, which is a good thing, but it is hard. It's, it's hard to make those decisions because you got to let people go. You got to feel worse. You got to cut certain jobs out. So that's a hard, that's a hard one for sure. Yeah, it was pretty difficult. I, I, I was off for a few months and I just, I had to get back to work. I'm, I'm the only one, uh, working full time. My wife has a part-time business that she started. So it's just, right. it was just bad timing. It was right before Christmas too, when I first went off. Right. So I, I had to, to figure something out like I needed to go back to work but I knew if I went back to my job like the stress is was was still going to be there is is still going to uh be a roadblock for me uh from healing fully right so I mean it's this... almost like uh the universe lines up in a, in a way at first we see it as a as a problem but after you see it as wow everything worked out so that I would have some time to to work on myself yeah, yeah, I was I wasn't too worried. I I knew things were gonna work out. I just was giving giving the time the a, a, adequate time for that to all play out. I knew it was yeah. gonna work out. I just didn't know really exactly how. Okay, so now we lead into. You start doing my program in, in March, and uh, and yeah, how did that come about? I think it was uh, I called you randomly because I heard through the great friends some from some of my friends and your brother that you were dealing with some um health issues so then i decided one day while i was cleaning a carpet i remember this now okay i was cleaning a carpet and i put it i turned it off and i was like oh you know what i'm gonna message garrett to see how he's doing and then yeah, uh that's crazy too uh it yeah. was actually my birthday when you messaged me <laughs> and i think i had been talking to my brother or somebody else about about what i was going through and I think they did like mention you. I was like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, just so focused on everything that was going on with myself. I yeah. it was in my like my purview really. And then uh, yeah, you messaged me. And we started talking. I was like, you know what? Like, I'm willing to try anything that you're that you're recommending. So I I started yeah. on that March, and I noticed within I was I was kind of. I, while I was off, I was also doing, I was doing some of your, uh, what you recommend to do to bring the baseline down, but I wasn't doing it like on a dedicated schedule. Right. Like, it wasn't intentional. It's just like, I don't feel good. I need to do this to feel, to feel good type of thing. So yeah. I got it on a dedicated schedule. And I noticed right away, my sleep was like the number one thing. The thing that was keeping me behind from having a good day the next day was the first thing to get fixed. And that's then uh, that's, everything kind of before you continue. That's a that's an important thing with doing well any program. Something that you know is is you know the path is the dedication that it takes to make the time in your day. No excuses. Make sure you do it every day. Don't straddle the fence. Make that choice that you're gonna do this and focus. And that's what you did. You had to make that choice. And that's when things started to shift with you. So go ahead. Yeah, it was tough. Like when I was off, it was easy. But when, once I got back to work, I worked 10 hour shifts and then I come home and my family wants time with me and I got a six year old that wants to play and everything else that needs to get done around the house, too. So it was hard. So yep. you have to do really, really good time management to make it fit into your life so you, it can become a lifestyle. Right. So in the morning, yep. I do my visuals and then later on at night, I do like my my elevating. And that's awesome. kind of how it works for us. And then on Mondays, uh, well, my kid's off right now 
for uh, summer holidays. But usually when she's uh, at school, my wife works on Mondays. And I have a day to do whatever, whatever I got to do. Yeah. So you make it work for, for yourself. So you take whatever is there from what I did, because it's pretty much my program is pretty much what I noticed. I take out all the fluff. I try to make it so that, you know, it, it gets to the point. It's hard work, but it gets to the point where you can kind of take the methods and implement them into your own life. And then from there, you know, you can almost answer, you become your own guide in a way. When you do this long enough, you become your own guide and you can kind of answer your own questions with certain s situations. So after you started doing the work, what, what just have you noticed with certain symptoms? Uh, like right, at, like within I, probably two months. So it was the sleep was the first one. Once I started getting my sleep, then like the fogginess and it was, it was weird. It was almost like I felt like I was intoxicated. Yeah. Like I, yeah. I just could not think like I couldn't focus no matter. I would try with all my might to focus. My brain just was like. It was Did like, you feel dumb? Yeah, I felt like so you were doing stupid. Like even yeah. even speaking to people, like probably if you look back at, I don't know if we have any recorded uh, meetings before. Like it was really tough to just carry a conversation, or like to, to even think to vocalize my next words. I knew what I wanted to say, but the words are just like like blocked. Yeah, I remember I had the same thing. I was talking to my boss about working on a weekend. And I would be, I would t talk like I was this dummy and she would, yeah, like and I knew, like I knew what was happening. I was like, oh, look, uh, I sound stupid. And I would look at her face and she would give me like a look like I was stupid, like things like that constantly. And you're right. Forgetful memory. Like I, I didn't know uh, where my house was down my street. I forgot where my address was, right? It's things like that, where your memory kind of closes off. So that's good. Okay. So your, your sleep came back online. Uh, and your memory started to come back. Yeah, memories, memory came back a little bit. Um, more like the fogginess and and stuff like that. Uh, clarity. Nice. Uh, the headaches were gone. Uh, oh, wow. I was getting really bad uh, muscle spasms in my back. I have like old injuries in my back. And I, yep. I, my wife, even before before this journey, she she would know. She was like, as soon as you get anxious or you, you get stressed out. That's the first thing. It's like trigger. Yep. You start to see the pattern. Yep. So, uh, yeah, that got better. Uh, so now I'm eating whatever I want. I mean, right. I, so no more, no more wheat issues no, after no more 10 years. Food sensitivities. So that's how did a, you dive into that? How did you get the balls to dive into wheat with it's such a crazy sensitivity? I, I honestly, I love food so much. And I just like, it was like a game of cat and mouse with the limbic yeah. system. I was yeah. like, I'm going to call it's bluff. Like it's going to be a locomotive coming down the tracks. So I'm just going to stand there. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and to pump the brakes <laughs> before anything yeah. happened. It was great. So yeah, no, was I got to move on. Was there like second. a shift of thought? Like, like you mentioned, uh, kind of like the matrix, that one scene that you mentioned. Oh Yeah. Yeah, the the one scene where uh, Neo he goes to see the fortune teller, and the 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 boy is sitting on the ground. And he's levitating the spoon, and he's yeah. actually like bending the spoon with his with his mind. And he tells Neo, he's like, "There is no spoon." And like, as soon as Neo further on in the movie, he realizes like, "This is an air I'm breathing. There there is no spoon." That's when he started developing all of his powers and stuff. He can yeah. fight the agents, so. That was kind of like my mentality going into it, that there yep. is no spoon and like believing it fully. And uh, yeah, it worked. Yeah. Well, normally with, with uh, digestion, I'm very cautious. I always say go slow, uh, work on getting your baseline down and uh, emptying that allostatic loads slowly and turning off alarms. And then when you're at a point, then we start to train. Then we get the flares that are more controllable. It's like a controlled fire. And then we drag out the flares on purpose and we keep doing that back and forth to build leverage and then we recover. But you seem to move through this a lot quicker, which is yeah, not in the beginning, you don't see that too often. In the beginning, it hit me pretty hard. So I backed off a little bit and I tried in a few more days and it was a little bit less. And then I went like I went seeking uh symptoms and it just didn't come. That's amazing.
So what does it feel like now to be able to eat anything oh, you want? It's awesome. I, I like, I love food. I'm a foodie. I, so I've been going yeah. everywhere trying to find the best pizza places that I can, that I can find around the area. Yeah. Just being able to like go, go wherever and have a burger or go to a food truck and get whatever you want. is amazing. feels great. Yeah. Even like family functions, Christmases, stuff like that. You're going to be able to dive in and try out the, the you know, the stuffing and the. Yeah, I get to enjoy it. Like my, my, my wife's family always does huge like desserts and at family functions. So we had a huge family reunion. They had fried fish, like fresh, like all that yeah. stuff. I had it all. They're like, oh, there's gluten free. I'm like, no, I don't need that. That <laughs> was awesome. That's awesome. They're like, what? And even at work, yeah. at work, we had a huge barbecue and everybody's like, oh, Garrett, there's a uh, gluten free. I'm like, no, don't eat it. They're like, what? Really? Yeah, yeah. That opens up the conversations, right? Yeah, it's like, awesome. Well, it's a long story. Like, how, did the you, yeah, like, to get how did you do that? I'm like, well, it's like a long story. Like, I'll tell you eventually. I'm, I don't right. really want to get into it now. Right. That's a good idea. In the beginning, you kind of keep it uh, on the down low because friends, you know, they, they mean the best for your family they'll want to you know wait no what you're doing is wrong no you should try this or right there's too too many people that know is never a good thing with this type of work i had to keep it on a down low and then recover and then it was like i'm telling everybody and yeah. that's the time to do it awesome any other things that we we missed on um um uh eating my foods hormones are back up oh awesome amazing they went all the way from near the bottom to the bottom, then back up to the top range. That's amazing. Uh, did they did they say anything with the test of that? Oh, this is remarkable. They said, "Oh, you're just normal. You're just back to normal." Yeah. <laughs> like I don't know. It's really weird. They they didn't say too much, but they're like, "That's great. That's exactly what we wanted." I'm like, okay. All the supplements really worked. All the IV fucking. Yeah, um, high dose vitamin C it, it, intravenous fucking yeah. Okay. They, they they like max me out on all my medications and like oh I see it work now, I'm like okay. Yeah. That's the thing, like for people that are you know finally regulated and then they say, uh, actually I would like to come off these medications and that will be like what the, right? And it's like it wasn't the medications, it wasn't any diets, it wasn't right, it was just recalibrating your your nervous system that's all oh, there, was, it's there, there was one thing that i just you you kind of jog my memory there uh it when it when it first started happening i, I felt like i was i was losing my job and everything like my status I, like i started right. getting really depressed so i went i had to go to the walk-in clinic and they prescribed me uh medication for depression anxiety Ooh. it was more stress like it was i was off for stress but uh, right. it was like one of the first things I kicked. Like they're not doing anything. It's like a band aid. It's it's yeah. not going to fix anything. It's not going to make me feel better. Right. It's they're was, managing. They're... Sorry. Yeah. They're just, they're just managing symptoms, and we don't want to manage. We want to fully recover. We want to get to the root. Right. And that's that's what we're doing. This is great. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So this is the check in four and a half months, and then uh, we'll get you back in at the year mark. And then we'll see what other shifts you've done and you can share with us. So thanks for joining me today and sharing your story. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Awesome, man. Take care. Take care. See ya.